Hidden. The car is not actually a dually because there is no duallys in, in automation. So we actually got to go ahead and just delete. Pussy! Oh, I'm sorry. Is this too hard to do? <laughs> oh, yeah. I made a dually with uh, an engine with so much torque that braking is particularly difficult. This car has so much torque that it struggles to completely stop. I'm holding the brakes completely and it's just coasting whilst slowly warming up those brakes. But why don't I show you how I made this car, not what I've made with this car, which is actually even more special than what you think. So the first thing I did is I made myself an engine with a smidgen bit of torque. <laughs> That's over 13 and a half hundred foot pounds of torque at not much above idle RPM. At its actual idle, this thing is creating 1,016 newton meters. At idle, it's creating 745 newton meters. So you wanna see what this engine is? It's a 13.5 liter V10. This thing is beastly. Wanna give it a bit of a listen? Yeah, sure. Not very loud, but down? I love the sound of this thing going down in RPM. Sounds really good, give it a listen. The way it does it in stages kind of, I know that that's probably just a limitation of the game, but it really does sound like some sort of sci-fi thing. Anyway, let's move on. So the first issue I had is trying to figure out what sort of tire widths to have. So I decided to go with just a regular front and rear, and then I divided the rear by two, put it inwards, then I took it over to blender and then doubled the wheels up. But there's one thing here that you may notice. No, it's not the front bumper bar. No, it's not those exhaust stacks. Yes, it's this wet wheel flare that I put here. So I had troubles trying to, cause I don't want to have the front flared. I wanted to have that look where it's just, you got a regular front size and then the rear's just like an afterthought slapped on, but I couldn't make it in BMNG easily. So I went ahead and I made a 3D model of it and I made it into a mod. The mod will be on the uh, workshop if you want to go download that for yourself. And then I went along and I did a whole bunch of other things. So we just got ourselves a nice slush box automatic with with a decent top speed, nothing too off the chain. Got a manual locker, though right now it's uh, saying that the rear tires blew out, but we just ignore that for now. Got really big ass brakes on the front. They're vented six pistons full size and they still are not enough to pull this car up. It's crazy and they're quite racy. Aerodynamics, we just went for an off-road skid tray. I know that that doesn't do a whole lot for the actual car at BMNG, but I like the feeling of it. The interior, we wanted really heavy. So we went premium, infotainment, heavy safety, traction control, ABS, hydraulic power steering and just some regular progressive springs for dealing with that really hefty uh, weight load carrying load yeah and this is the other thing I went with solid leaves all round to add extra weight so then we have traction for pulling things and as a result this car without fiddling with any sliders weighs 3300 kilos which is what in pounds seven nearly 7400 pounds god in pounds that sounds so big in kilos it just sounds very big <laughs> what a, uh, it doesn't do a lap time, does it? Yeah, because the tires blow out. But yeah, so this car is incredibly beastly and doesn't like to stop. I would modify this now, but after exporting it, there was so much work went into it that I just don't want to deal with the effort. The one thing I had to do is I had to 3D model this to make it actually fit properly in together. And then I had to delete this inner wheel well, which also took a bit of time. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there that I don't want to do. I also wish I had made these chrome. I don't want to go in and do that. I, I really don't. So you can see here that yes, these wheels are actually connected in the middle. We have a proper hub style system going going on here. So I am pretty happy with how this has turned out. And what I did for the wheel size then is I just went in, I had to change the position of it a little bit to make it fit properly. Then I did a bit of a wheel offset and then changed the hub and tire width. So then they were double the size back to the original size, which I knew was good for handling. So if I go control T here, you can see that yes, this is a whole lot bigger. So I do actually know how to duplicate wheels, but doing that is a huge hassle and I hate doing it. So that's not what we're doing today. Boy, th this thing was ooh, such a nightmare. As you can see, they are proper functioning wheels. Oh boy, this thing was such a hassle to do. I, oh, I never want to do this again, but I am going to for a video one day. Ugh. There is, however, one thing I'm going to do a little bit different from Rye. And... Oh yes, 
I've got myself hooked up a, a fifth wheel invisible hitch. So you can see here, it's right there. Unfortunately, if I have it too far forward, then we have a problem with it uh, colliding with the front of the vehicle. We still have that issue, but you know what? Screw it. You know what, actually? No, we're, we're not going to use this one. This one does go too far forward, unfortunately. So instead, we're loading up with Malk. That's how you say it, right? Malk? Malk? Malk. Malk. All right, let's bring her in. Oh boy, this thing does have a lot of torque. Oh, that's right. Yeah, also the tray is too high. So I had then, oh God, I get, oh. oh, stop, 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 stop. Go backwards, go backwards. Oh, there we go, and back, oh, oh, stop. Oh, God. okay. That'll do. God, having a car with this much torque is problematic. Upsa daisies. And that's attached, right? Good. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I can put these away. Oh, okay, I can press up and get rid of them. Nope, that, uh, that went the wrong way. That is as far away as those legs can go. Come on. Anyway, let's go take this thing for a test. Pussy ass bitch taking a few hay bales to market. Come on, when you could do this, then I'll be proud of you, right? Oh boy, oh, oh, yep, there we go, okay. And floor it, yep, there we go. Oh, uh, yep, get rid of that UI. Take a bit of a screenshot there for the thumbnail. <laughs> oh no, God, okay, yeah, so here's the problem. The weight is a little bit far back. So you know what? I think I might actually edit this now. So then, yeah, we'll have the trailer a little bit further forward so I can have some weight on the front tires. So this is basically most of what I needed to add. I just went into the notes section of the main J-beam of the car, put in this little bit of code here, and then I anchored these nodes to existing nodes in the file. So you can see here that these TW and TW2 I just anchored them to existing nodes. But for now, we're just gonna move them a little bit forwards. All right, hopefully that's not a jank position and the trailer doesn't collide with the vehicle. I just wanted it to be in front of the rear axle. I really should have like 3D modeled the thing to go in there, but eh, whatever. <laughs> I'm holding nothing right now. No accelerator, no brake, no nothing. It's just, <laughs> it's just jank. Oh, this car is so jank. God damn it. Let's try this again, shall we? Brum brum, bitches. Yes. Okay, good. We have vague sense of steering. And let's take this also up the 15% grade. Look at that absolute beast monster mode, brah. Got all that traction. And we don't have semi-slicks or anything like that. No, we just have some good old sports tires because this thing is a V10 twin turbo. There's no way that people aren't going to want a sporty kind of vehicle from this. Can I, can, can we turn? Ooh, this is. Not great. Oh, oh, ah, uh, okay. Let's, let's three point turn this then. Okay. So it seems that I'm jackknifed. So then we go forwards, counter steer, then go backwards again, but like reverse that way. So then I can get the trailer to move the way I want it to. Yes. Okay. I'm having to do actual driving here. Oh, come on. Why? Why? Why must you? Not going to lie. This feels really good to completely annihilate and embarrass Rai. I mean, I mean, oh, oh. Rai won't cry over this. He'll be like, oh, that's fantastic. And then he'll come back and like create a better one. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that you can't do it with uh, like making actually two physical wheels in the coding as well. I'm just saying that there's not really a whole lot of point and I could do it. I just don't want to spend like a week trying to do it because there's so many issues with doing janky ass mods like that. All right, let's try the second gradient. Oh, I suppose it's the third one. We didn't really do the first one, much like he didn't either, which fair enough, it is a very small gradient. It's also not degrees, it is percent. So we got here 25%. And let's see if we can do a hill start. So we're gonna stop right in the middle of it. Handbrake on. And can we take off? Yes, we can. Oh, ho, ho. losing a little bit of traction, but no, we're still going. Oh, oh, it's struggling. It struggles when I turn, but it's still doing it. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, you know what it is? The traction control. And I'm bottoming out. Oh, no. Those shitty ass wheel leg thingies that you can't remove on this trailer. Those were slamming the ground. That sucked. <laughs> All right, let's turn traction control off for the next one. The next one is going to be quite hard, I'm assuming since we did struggle a bit on that one. The, the, I'm not gonna lie, the truck is getting a little bit damaged currently. <laughs> but it'll be fine, it'll be fine, mate. Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry, baby. Oh, 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 turn, 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 turn. Oh, I, I just missed it, but then I hit it anyway. That's fine. This vehicle probably only costs uh, like a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. Not as if like you're very precious with it. It is a work vehicle. Come on, turn. T you don't want to turn? Just turn. Just, t there you go. Now you're turning. Who's a good little truck? Here's a good little what's not actually a truck, but America's cool truck. This thing does get stuck. Trying to figure out like which, like a, uh, get stuck in like an angle with a trailer so that it won't turn the way you want it to. All right, first we're gonna floor it over here, see if we can make it over in one foul swoop. And it looks like a success. Oh God, the wheel, front wheels completely came off. That was horrendous. Oh dear. You know, if you're gonna make one of these, I strongly suggest that you make your suspension a lot stiffer. This is not <laughs> dealing with the weight particularly fantastically. I get also the feeling that like, realistically, the rear suspension would pop through <laughs> the tray of the ute uh, truck unless you like properly reinforce the tray. Oh God, it would just, it would just ruin it. Though this is on chassis rail, on like on a proper f old school frame rail. Oh, the trailer's stuck on a straight line again. I can't turn right. That sucks. Oh, can we turn left? No, no, we can't. Okay. There we go. We turned left. We did it, guys. You proud of me now, mom? All right, we're going to do a hill start this time around. If I can actually get turned around. Oh, oh, we might be able to do it. We might be able to do it. Oh, we've done a look at that amazing turning circle. Isn't that fantastic? We're stuck. We're stuck at like a bit of a dicky angle. Okay, well this sucks. I'm gonna have to reset. All right, let's 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 go again. We got a brand new fresh truck, no damage, no stuck. We are good to go. I The next time I do something like this, which I am going to do something like this again, I'm going to create a proper flatbed. Okay, so we're gonna come here and we're gonna stop. Okay, the weight is so much, it's actually still dragging us back. Let's go into manual control mode. Oh, drive. Handbrake on. And away we go. Full power. Do we have the traction? Oh, it looks like we have the traction. We're, we're gonna stop halfway through, because I think like it went a little bit flat there for a second. Okay, so stop. Are we good? And let's go again. Okay, yeah, it looked like we're on just like a smidgen bit of a less angle there, and we're able to take away. Okay, looks like we're having a bit of problems. Let's go rear diff and front diff and try again. Oh my god! It's pulling away. It's carrying up this, what is it, 1,100 or 11,000 liters of milk? Oh boy. Yes, go. Full power. Floor it. Okay, maybe, maybe full power wasn't the best idea. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, we complete lift off. Oh no, the legs are starting to touch. Oh frick, I wish I could delete those legs. You can on the other trailer. I don't know why you can't on this one. Landing gear. You can't get rid of it. Can I turn it off? Is it still there? Damn it, they're still there. Frick. It seems that there's no actual solution here with this trailer. So, we have proven that this thing can hill start like a motherfucking boss. But you really don't want to be going slow at the crest. And right, let's roll back a little bit. Do a hill start. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. That was a mistake. All right. We're doing a hill start. Obviously, we're able to pull away really super easily. And let's see if during the hill start, we can build up enough speed. Oh no, there's not gonna be enough. Oh, we're bottoming out. Ah, oh, God damn this trailer. How dare you? And low range breaks this model. I, I've found that for some reason, sometimes the tires just pop off. Yep, there you go. We lost a tire and it's not enough anyway. We just, can't overcome the friction. Oh God! Wow. That's not happening. Both of my wheels are just broken. I'm not steering right now. That's just the way it is. Yeah, we just don't have the traction for this to, get, uh, to overcome that. Oh, is it even gonna reach? Oh, they don't reach now. So yeah, we can't do that. What we can do is hot lap this some bitch. Oh yeah, and give it a fill skull. <laughs> This is going to be a bit all over the place, but we may as well start with the weekend category, starting with styling. Some people like trucks, but for Australians, 
these just look a little too much like you fancy your cousin. <laughs> but it still gets about a 7 out of 10. The acceleration is no supercar, but it'll do a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.3 seconds. That's no slouch. It'll also finish the quarter mile in the 13s, which for many cars is impressive, but this weighs as much as many cars, so it gets an 8 out of 10. The handling though is sketchy at best. It's just so incredibly oversteery. And the brakes that need to be aided by putting the car into neutral? Yeah, I'm only giving this a 3 out of 10. The fun factor for a car like this is high, because you can go off-road and have enough torque to drag the road along with you. So it gets a 7 out of 10. The cool factor is really high as well. With that insane amount of torque, everyone's going to talk about it and everyone's going to want to ride in it. It gets an 8 out of 10. The trackability is odd? Sure, on a real track like this it sucks, but take this to a drag strip or pull away from a stoplight and it'll give you a huge smile, so it gets another 8 out of 10. Giving it a total weekend score of 41, which for a car that handles horrifically is pretty high. But moving on to the daily scores, it's once again getting mixed results. As for the features, this is an incredibly luxurious car. Great AC that encompasses you, cool infotainment, plush leather seats, it gets a 9 out of 10. The comfort is pretty good too, with a confidence inspiring high seating position and those seats, it gets another 9 out of 10. The quality is okay, Tanner is not known for quality, but they don't break down a whole lot either, so it only gets a meandering 8 out of 10. The practicality is, oh, problematic? Sure, it can carry a lot, but the security of putting things in a tray isn't really great. And the maneuvering is bad, and not being able to fit in many car parks really hurts it. So combining the good and the bad things, it gets a 6 out of 10. The value also is quite questionable. If you're a normie, then you don't need this, and if you're a company, this is overkill. So it's probably not meant for you, meaning that it's a $120,000 price tag is really hard to justify, so it only gets a 2 out of 10 for me. Finally though, ongoing costs. This isn't a common engine, it's kind of more like a showpiece that they wanted to make, and not to mention it's going to chew up those custom sports tyres, and guzzle that fuel. So it earns its 1 out of 10 boys. Meaning that it gets a 35 for the dailies, showing that if you want the good, you have to pay a whole lot more. So if we add this all up for a total fill score, we get 76. Giving it third place on the fill score scoreboard. Or do I just call that Phil Scoreboard? Alright, whatever. It's just below the flying DIC future thing, you know, that uh, flying DeLorean type car, and above the Flabble Twizzler. Who names these things? <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I mean, I say today's, but really, this video took like four days to make or something like that because there's just constant stuff ups that I was doing. But I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye!